right, we're back. So the other day it started raining on me. I wasn't able to actually get the machine to do any work. So right now we're gonna go and get that pile of dirt manure moved. So let's get this old beast started back up. So here at the farm, basically they've got an old setup for cows. So this whole lot used to be com completely full of cattle. And these silos were basically ran into this through this conveyor into this belt fed feeder trough. So one of the quick things we're gonna do before we leave with the wheel loader is we're gonna take this pile of manure and we're just gonna get it out of the way. So we're gonna scoop it and just dump it up over the fence back there so they've got a little bit more room to work and be able to use this area better. So I'm gonna get the machine started up and we'll go from there. I know we've got a coolant leak, but I wanna run it. So we're gonna put some water in it. All right, here we go. Let's see if this old beast wants to start. Well, we blew a hydraulic line. Oh boy, there it is. So I went to literally put some pressure down on the bucket, try and lift the front wheels, see what it had for weight capacity. And yeah, we got Exxon Valdez here, so. And yeah, it's gonna leak all of it. <laughs> All right, well, it was bound to happen. I ended up just dra putting the machine in drive, or reverse, I mean, and backing it in here so we still have it under cover. I found this big lid to something that, I mean, I'll have to clean it out for them, but it worked perfect to collect the oil. There's our big leak in that line, it blew. This line looks new. And so I will probably be replacing this one, this one, and this one, just do all three the they go to hard lines that way and then it's hard lines i'll have to take this plate back off and check All right, to get these out, I think I'm gonna have to take these blocks. There are four little holes in two pieces of plastic that retain these hydraulic hard lines, but I can't get the wrench on. So if I remove those lines, I can lift one of the hard lines up and out of the way enough to get the wrench on. So let's try that. So there's one half of the retainer, and I thought they were plastic, that's actually metal. But that goes over all four hard lines, keeping them from moving around. So now that we have that out of the way, should be able to move these lines some. Thank you. 
maybe. All right, we got the bottom two off. Almost got this middle one that blew off. There we go. So there's our hole. I'm gonna go ahead and take that top one off. We're probably gonna replace three of the four of them. So, cause they're all old. This middle one, second from the bottom, it, it's newer. So basically we've got one, two, three, and four. Number two is the one that blew. And as you can see, number three, it's a lot newer. It's still a heck of a lot more flexible. The plan's probably gonna be reuse three, replace one, two, and four. And they correspond to one, two, three, and four on the loader arm here. There are hoses that go down to the two articulation hydraulic cylinders down in there. I'm not gonna mess with those. Each of the four cylinders that, load, that handle the bucket and the loader arm also have two hydraulic hoses each. For now, we're just gonna get those four hoses in the middle taken care of and we'll deal with any other failures later. I don't think we're gonna be able to make it and get the pile of, uh, of manure moved for them because I really don't wanna deal with any more problems here. So plan is gonna be fix those four, load it on a trailer and get it out of here. All right, so we're back here at the 645. I've gotten three brand new hoses made. This fourth one was already replaced and is still in pretty good shape. There's no nicks or dings in it. It definitely blew on the previous owners. And these were about 70, I think 75 bucks a piece. And so I opted to just go ahead and reuse this one rather than getting a fourth one made. So we'll go that route. But one thing we did kind of figure out is these are the old three. We had to cut this one open because there was no PSI rating on the hoses. So the way he did it, he just cut it in half and he was able to look at the metal in the hose there and see how thick it was. And so by looking at that, he was able to judge which hose to choose. The higher, really high PSI rated hoses have almost no rubber. It's a little, little bit of rubber on the inside, a little bit of rubber on the outside, mostly metal. And so I didn't know that. So that was kind of cool. We did cut the one that blew so that worst case scenario, I've got these two as extras to just hang on to in a pinch. But cool thing, when we look at these badges, these little uh, metal tags on this one, it says nine of 65. And this one here, it says 11 of 65. So, what that tells me is this machine is probably a 1965 or a 1966. And so somebody in the comments mentioned that the TL designation only mattered for 65, 66, and 67. They stopped using that designation in 68. So that makes this machine one of those three years. You add that with this 9 of 65, this 11 of 65, it's probably a late 65, early 66 machine. So I thought that was kind of cool. But we're going to jump right in to getting these babies back on. And hopefully they go in easy because they did not come out easy. <laughs> All right, let's do hose number one. All right, last hose. Try and keep these hoses as straight as I can so that when they're articulating, it doesn't affect, it doesn't end up bending into the frame or the, or something else. Uh, 
Beautiful. All right, now this piece here slides in behind these hard lines, and then this comes from the other side and bolts through to keep these four lines spaced properly. So now I gotta pry those back a little bit, bang that thing in there, get them lined up, and should be good to go. This might be a trick here. Bingo, got it. Now this goes on the back side of it. There we go. Beautiful, I'll get that tightened down and should be good to go. All right, so the hydraulic tank is right here on the side of the cab and I'm betting that's the fill Problem is the cab just has this wonderful little cutout for us. There's a plate there that can be removed and then there's a plate here. I'm kind of betting that might be the filter. But we're gonna pop that plate off because it's a little more accessible and see what we find. Yep, that's our filter housing. The filter does not look terrible. Button that back up. We'll deal with replacing the filter another day. All right, so this is probably the fill plug for the hydraulics. Yep. So here we have a canned food can covering what's supposed to be the breather. And as you can see, the breather here, it is uh, broken. I don't know if there's pieces I could replace or if I gotta get a whole new one, but this whole, whatever this packing is, is just rotten completely disintegrating so yeah that's great but hopefully I can find a replacement one or something to convert it over to but that is basically a breather and what that does is it allows any built-up pressure in the tank to release so that the pressure tank doesn't get too pressurized it's supposed to be a slight bit of pressure in hydraulic oil tanks just enough to keep the system from, you know, losing prime essentially. Um, but you don't want too much, especially once they get warm and hot. So this is beautiful. <laughs> Our fill plug being right there. I can probably get a funnel from over here on the other side and get some hydraulic fluid in it. I don't know, there's a screen in there. I don't know how to check the hydraulic fluid level. I'm gonna look around and see if I find a gauge. All 
All right, we'll see what that does for us. We can always add more. 24 volts engaged. Start this old dog back up and check for leaks. Hydraulics are fixed, so it moves and runs and drives and kind of stops. Doesn't leak hydraulic fluid everywhere. Here's a question for everybody. Right now, in this hydraulic tank, I can hear a, a glug, 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 glug. Like it's basically draining down into something. What would cause that? Would it be the filter just so stopped up that it can't quite flow freely? Maybe the vent isn't working properly? It does have this drain port or whatever this port is on the side. I pulled that out, it's fine. Uh, I guess this is probably the drain. Um, this was leaking slightly, I tightened that up, it's stopped. But I am curious, what do you guys think? What, what would be the other potential causes of that thing going glug, glug, glug? Now shuts off with the key. Nice. Definitely didn't do anything to fix that. Well, so far so good. I think the hydraulic fluid is a little low. When the loader arm was getting up there a little ways, I could hear it whining. The pump, I could hear the pump whining a little bit. This is more than that. I gotta get my, uh, my ladder. Got my ladder.
The last five gallons might need more still. I got another bucket, but I wish there was a dipstick. So it looks like we do have a hydraulic lean line. I think it's this second one right here is dripping, so that one's not quite tight enough. Hope I can get a wrench in there because it was really difficult. I had to take off these things just to get to that one, so I'll figure something out.
one thing I like to do when I'm on a site like this and I've got a machine I can use just leave it in better shape than I found it. So I talked to them, they had that pile of manure been sitting there for probably as long as the machines have, maybe longer, and I was like, do you mind if I just get that out of your way? And he's like, oh, happily. So got that all cleared off. This is a huge concrete pad where they used to have all their cattle. So obviously they don't do that anymore, but concrete is always a good place to store anything. So they've got a lot of implements and attachments dump truck with a snow plow on it and they've got other machines that maybe they at some point they want to start parking on here so at least now all that's out of the way just pushed it very to the end there put some across there's sort of the fence there but yeah so far so good the machine's running well haven't blown any more hydraulic lines yet but I don't know what it's doing for coolant as far as like how the temperature is on the engine because the thermostat gauge is not working, so gotta figure that out. I know there's a leak on the top of the, the radiator and it's leaking coolant out the top. So I'm not too worried about it because you're not gonna lose a ton with a leak that high. So running it for the last you know, 10 minutes did not affect anything poorly. So we'll get that figured out. I need to pull that radiator and get that leak fixed. It's ready to put on a trailer and get out of here. So. That is going to be what's next on this old beast. And then when we get it back to the shop, we'll do things like a full service on it. We're going to address the coolant leak on the radiator. We're going to find some of the other drip drop leaks and figure out what they are. We're going to wash the old beast. Got to do something about the steering wheel situation. My hand is turning black just from driving it because those old steering wheels start to break down and all the little black particles, whatever kind of material it's made out of, just starts getting all over your hands. All right, well, today is over. What do you think? Finally got this old dog running, lifting, moving stuff, and we got some work done with it. So I am totally stoked to have done that. Got that pile moved out of the way for tonight. We're gonna park this old beast right here. Next step, get it on trailer. Get it moved back to the shop. So, as always, I truly thank you for your support. I appreciate that you're following along on this series and you know, watching here at Salvage Workshop. A lot of other things you could be doing, so I greatly appreciate that you're spending your time here. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Leave a comment, I love hearing from you. Even if I don't respond to everybody in the comments, I read them all and I truly appreciate your support. So thank you, all your advice, all your suggestions, they're all taken into account. I listen to them. And at the end of the day, we got it running, didn't we? Now let's get it moved. This thing's gonna be a useful machine. For me and all my old machines, my old pack of Weimaraners, I'd like to thank you for watching Salvage Workshop.